Hi, it's Dave from Mega Points Controllers here. On this video, I'm going to walk you through getting going with your new mini panel processor, whether it's a standalone unit or you have the starter kit. Uh, the instructions are basically the same, but on this video, I'll be walking through the starter kit so that it all makes sense. First of all, we have the mini panel processor itself. The configuration is simple. We have uh, network connectors here, and there's a pair, though you only need to use one. We have the power input here, which is 12 volts regulated, and we don't care about the polarity. And we have 12 connectors here for 12 pairs of LEDs. And we have 12 connectors here for 12 switches or buttons or levers. Now the first resource you want to look at is the quick start guide document, which is this piece of paper. So let's pull out and you can get a clue. So what this will do is walk you through getting going quickly with the mini panel. And it just walks you through getting started, plugging it in and basically seeing it operate. We also have the actual panel, um, the mini panel uh, user guide as well, which contains much more in-depth information. It shows you where all the connectors are, walks you through all the various things it can do and how to hook it up, and also gives you the schematics if you want to wire your own LEDs or buttons. So it shows you all of that, and it also explains what the buttons do and when you might or might not want to adjust them. So before we dive in, let's look at the mini panel starter kit itself. It's available in a number of different versions. This is a stall motor version. This is a servo version. And the difference is each of the starter kits comes with an appropriate driver board depending on what you've selected. So here it's stall motors. And I'll work through all of the different types on this video. The starter kit has the mini panel processor itself. It has, in this case, two Kato or stall motor drivers. So you'd use these for Kato point or um, stall motors such as Tortoise or the Cobalt and so on. It comes with 12 pairs of LEDs wired and cabled so they plug onto the LED connectors here and it also comes with 12 push buttons with the, the cables and the mounting hardware to hook them up onto your panel and there's also a network cable to get you started. To walk you through the basics first of all I'll begin with my mini panel and what I'll do I'll hook up uh, a power cable so this is one of my trusty modified servo leads but it's designed to accept um, bared wires any polarity and if I feed this um, 12 volts from a regulated power source or in this case a battery you'll see the panels lit up and I have a flashing light as well so the master light is on and the run light is flashing that means the board's working it's in its default condition and it's ready to go Let's hook up an LED. Here's an LED cable. It's pre-wired. The black lead goes to the outer edge and I'll plug it into connector or for channel number one. And you can see I have one of the lights illuminated. Now I'll find a button lead. So here's a button lead. It has two connectors, black to the outer edge, plugged into channel one. And I'll take one of our plug and play buttons and we're good to go. So we're wired up for control. Here's the LED and when I press the button you can see the lights flash effectively indicating when the points move and it shows you the direction that's been thrown. Let's say you have the servo edition starter kit. I'll introduce a servo controller here. Let's try and lose the reflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up 12 volts power into the servo controller and I will take a servo in this case I'm going to use a big servo so it's easy to see and I'm going to connect the servo with the signal lead which is usually the white or the lighter part towards the processor or to the left 
that's plugged into channel one. And what I'm going to do now is hook up some power. And when I apply power to the servo controller, we got a flash and the servo immediately moved. Now, the servo controller is looking for inputs from these switches. And what we want to do is connect our single network cable so we don't have wires flowing everywhere. So I'll plug a network cable into the servo controller. In this case, I've put the white lead to the top, which is marked SDA. So I want to match that with this lead, and the white is onto the SDA as well. Now what I'm going to do, turn the power off to the servo controller, and there's a button here marked low. Now if you notice with the network lead connected here, the two lights on the mini panel have started flashing in a different pattern. They're both on together. And that's telling me somewhere I have a fault on my network. Now the fault in this case is I've powered off my servo controller so it's doing all the right things. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to set the servo controller into slave mode so it'll take instructions through this network cable. Press and hold the low button whilst you turn the power on. Now I can let go and if you observe I've got flashing lights and now the servo has gone into the position commanded by the mini panel. So if you look I've got one LED on and when I press the button they flash to indicate movement and now the servo's moved to the other extreme and back again and back again and that's the servo moving working and correctly configured. Now, if you make a terrible mess with a servo controller or you configure something you find undesirable, all you have to do is hold both middle buttons down while you turn the power on and you'll see this odd red flash for about five seconds. And what that's done is it's factory reset the unit and it's now ready to go again. So I have to turn the power off, press and hold low, power on and it's programmed forever to now accept input through the network lead. When I press the button, servo moves. When I press the button again, servo moves back. So that's how the servo controller works. And the servo controller has outputs for 12 servos perfectly matching a mini panel, so one mini panel can fully utilize one servo controller. Let's now introduce the solenoid driver. Now this solenoid driver is capable of driving up to six solenoids. So the starter kit has two of these boards in the box so that you can daisy chain them to run up to 12 from a single mini panel. All I'll do is I'll take the network cable again and I'll plug it in observing the polarity with the white to SDA, switch the solenoid board on and what you'll see, did you hear the solenoids all click into the position? So as I press this you can see in here channel 1 is moving from one extreme to the other and this will operate for the first six solenoids. So if I plug this into channel number 6 and the LED. Now you should see this one move. If I press it, moves to one direction, and I press it again, it goes back. So how do you operate channels seven to 12? Well, it's really simple. You'll daisy chain your second solenoid board in through the network socket, either here or here, but it's probably more convenient to do it here on the layout. And you see here, there's a little jumper marked range. Move it to the high setting. And now these are seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So if I move this, well, if I leave it on number six and press the button, nothing's operated. But if I move the LED onto channel seven and I move the switch onto channel seven, that will effectively be the first one on the second board. And there it goes one way and the other. And if I want to change back to the lower address range for the first board, move the jumper and the first six will operate. Like so. It's the same principle 
for the stall motor or the Kato driver. So I have a Kato driver board here. This will work with the Tortoise or the, um, the Kato Unitrack. And the way you configure that is there's a jumper here which is either in STL for stall motor mode or KTO for Kato points mode and you change the mode simply by removing the jumper and plugging it into the appropriate position. It also has a range jumper and if I put it onto low this will take on the addresses of the first six and if I move it to the high position it will take on the addresses of the second six. So what I need to do is attach some power and then you can see it operate. Now the Tortoise motors and the Kato Unitrack are rated at 12 volts. So this board accepts 12 volts from a regulated power supply. The solenoid driver accepts whatever voltage your solenoids are running at, which is typically 16 to 18 volts AC or DC. So let's energize this board. I've got a flashing light. So I now have power connected to the tortoise driver. I'm going to connect the network cable. And because the range jumper is in the low, the first six will activate. So if I have this connected to input number one, if you see the tortoise here and the LEDs for the mini panel, when I press the button, you can see it's moving and it's stopped. And then if I press the button again, it's moving and it's stopped. So I hope that's been a help to get you started with the mini panel and a range of either the Kato stall motor driver, the solenoid driver or the servo controller. Thanks for watching.